Today's video is a short segment of a longer video that I did with Vitruvian Farms back in the early summer. And this is the mushroom segment of their operation. So we kind of tour around to three different parts. They show us the uh, how they pasteurize their straw and or how they do their production. And then they show us the uh, indoor part of their operation. And then we also go and look at this sort of pasteurization chamber that they recently purchased. But the membership for my site from the field.farm is now open and it will be until October 18th. So what you're gonna see over the next 15 days here is a video that's a segment of videos at from the field each day for the next 15 days so you've got this time to sign up for my site and after this registration period it is going to go up in the new year you know when i first launched the site and there was no content in it people were basically buying in so i gave a special discount then called the founding members price and those people were essentially like crowdfunding me in a way because there would, there'd only been one video up and so the idea there was well if I have it low get people in early that price will be grandfathered in and so that's how it still works today in the sense that whatever price you sign up for you will always get that price in per per perpetuity as long as you're a member and this just reflects the value of the site when I first launched it there wasn't as much value in it as there is now now we've got almost a full year of featured videos and dozens and dozens of subject videos as well as the Q&A podcasts that I do for members each week that you sometimes see here on YouTube live but I only take questions from the members so now is the time to sign up if you want to do that there is a link in the show notes follow that to the site and sign up. You've got until October 18th, and I hope you enjoy this video. Instead of sterilizing um, enriched sawdust substrate, which a lot of growers are doing, we're using straw because oyster mushrooms are really uh, robust and they can kind of, they can eat a pretty varied diet. So, right. Um, this was something that was just easier for us to start with. And this is actually pasteurized organic rye straw. We heat it to like 165 degrees uh, with propane for about 45 minutes or so, and then we let it cool down, and then they go into an incubation chamber for about two weeks before they start fruiting. So the benefit of this method is it's super low tech. Uh, like this is just like a galvanized stock tank. It's it's a really easy way for people to get into mushrooms, and oyster mushrooms are one of the, the more easy mushrooms to grow, in right. my opinion. Yeah. Um, and it's a super quick turnaround, so you're you're harvesting in two or three weeks time versus uh, a little bit longer incubation for sawdust. How did you? What was the inspiration to get into doing mushrooms? Mushrooms, like, I, a lot going on. I think we've been doing mushrooms almost since the beginning. Um, I think it was Growing Power in Milwaukee. They oh. did, yeah, we did a workshop with them, and I think. Um, they had a little bit on, on growing oyster mushrooms. So uh, it took us a long time to kind of dial it in. I would actually say we didn't have it fully dialed in until last winter because um, we just, we kind of put off buying some of the equipment. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of equipment involved in the growing chambers that if you really want to grow pristine mushrooms, you should make the investments in and it can be kind of costly. So we finally made that jump and and got them. How is the? How many how many times have you cropped out? Is, or is this a totally new enterprise this, this year? Like you must have been experimenting with it yeah. a little bit before. I you... mean, we've been doing the we've been growing mushrooms since at least 2013. We've been growing them somewhat seriously the last three years, but really seriously since maybe November or so. Like to put it in perspective, like last year. In springtime, we would top out at maybe 50 to 70 pounds of mushrooms a week, and now we top out at around 150 pounds a week. How much do you sell per pound? Um, how, we sell it for 750 a pound. So we sell them in five pound cases um, to restaurants. That's for restaurants. We do sell a little bit at our farmer's market, and, and it turns out to be like 10 or $12 a pound, something like that. So is, is it... Is it worth the return? Yeah. It, like, do you yeah. see promise in this and that if you go, we could scale this or? If we're, we're kind of topping out at what we want to do with oysters because we're kind of at the max, I think, about what the restaurants want. We might be able to get up to 200 pounds a week. Um, but what we found is that 
if the team is packing them quickly, um, they're one of our more profitable crops. Just based on inputs? Based off labor. of the cost of the inputs, the straw is, is almost negligible. The spawn, we're actually seeding at a pretty high rate, yeah. which keeps down competitor bacteria, mildew and stuff yeah. like that. So that costs a little bit of money. And then your, your real biggest input is uh, energy. So it's keeping the room at the correct uh, humidity and temperature. 65% profit. 65%? Uh, 65% profit. Including After, labor. That's pretty good. When, when we're cruising. That's pretty damn good. Do you have any idea how that compares to other crops or products you do? Like you guys really crank a lot of greens. So the greens is probably one of our more profitable ones. Green, I mean, we, we kind of always say that labor is about 20 to 25% of most crops. And that'll vary. But now that greens are so automated, I would say we're down to like 10% on now labor. With that Ordemec. And then, then inputs are 18%, 20% on greens. That's wow. compost, soil. We put down seed. a lot of compost, so that, yeah. that costs a little bit of money. And But uh, also the microgreens, we do microgreens. We were doing more microgreens, but we lost a big customer. Uh, just no fault of ours. They just kind of went away from buying local. Right. Um, and uh, we were so, but we're still doing a pretty decent amount of microgreens these days, and that's definitely one of our most profitable crops, probably like for most farms. I think so, if you can move them. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So we. Wow, just in here. Uh, no, so that, that that's a fruiting chamber. Okay. This is a fruiting chamber. Uh, we got an incubation right there, and that fruiting chamber uh, is the twice the size of these ones. Damn. So yeah, they're just popping out of there. That's the. Um, organic rye straw that's been pasteurized, incubated for two weeks, and then hung. And then they'll hang in there for usually about two flushes. Um, and then they'll be taken out. And you can, you can do three flushes, but then your rate of infestation with um, flies goes way up. So just, and your the yield is way less. So we're just moving them in, moving them out really quickly. So this is this is the office and the mush office mushroom and area. Mushroom growing area. Damn. Who taught you guys, like how did you guys learn to do all this? YouTube. Really? Yeah. Who, I mean, who in particular? Uh, we still watch your videos. From, oh, so you, you oh, for mushrooms. For mushrooms. Oh, for That's mushrooms. That's what I mean. Um, yeah. Eric Myers, have you ever seen him? Yeah. Myers uh, mushrooms. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we learned a little bit from him. The, the straw we've been, we've been doing before I recently learned some of the you know some of the um, like the fans that people were using and stuff like that because one of our big issues is we weren't pushing air through the rooms you know it's like it's silly because the reason was for X amount of years I didn't want to spend the $200 to get the co2 meter right here's like oh man you know we don't want to spend and it's like if you don't get the right equipment you can't figure out what your parameters are right you end up like we could have been growing a lot more pounds for years. Yeah, right. just, but it, you, you, those are things you gotta learn. You do it right from the beginning. But Eric Myers, I watch What the Fungus. Yeah. Um, he doesn't really do the pasteurized straw. Um, like I said, I think we started on it from a growing power um, in Milwaukee. I don't know if you've heard of that. Oh yeah, I know. I've met okay. Will multiple times. Yeah, yeah. yep. Um, so I think it was from like an initial, like 2010, training we did with them oh, yeah. that I got on Because he's kind of out of commission now. The rest of it, yeah. The rest of it was um, online. I've got one of Paul Stamets' books. Sweet. Love um, Paul Stamets. Yeah. He's awesome. So you, know, you wow. can look in the other one if you want. Wow. Um, like I said, I mean, the whole thing is kind of pieced together, but it's, it's producing a lot of pounds. Damn. So, you know, we're kind of making do with, if you guys want to step in. Yeah, go ahead. Just uh, watch out. Yep, that's a little drop there. <laughs> Beauty. So yeah, we got the high pressure um, fogger is the, one, the the big pump downstairs. So that's got nozzles in every room that's shooting off every 15 minutes for about a minute. And then to make up any gap, uh, these centrifugal uh, foggers here go on and they're all turned on, turning on automatically. Wow. So. Why was it the why would why were you tr attracted to doing it in straw opposed to something else? The I think the straw is like the easiest way to get into it. Okay. Some people might disagree with me on that, but I, you, you have to sterilize the saw the the, the yeah. sawdust. Yeah. Um, 
And now I don't really view that as like a complicated process, but at the time, I, I, I guess I just looked at this. This is what I knew, and yeah. I thought that was the way to go. Yeah. And I don't know if we're gonna move the oysters away. I mean, we have the infrastructure for this right now, so I'm not sure that we're gonna move away from doing the oysters. We might play around with doing oysters in sawdust as well, but. Yeah. Man, it's like we're on Mars in a. Yeah, it's a crazy In a biodome or something. Wow, that's awesome. Barrels. 130 gallon um, steam sterilizer. You got the, the control panel over here. It's on wheels. Um, we just got it set up. But this is gonna be kind of the shiitake production space where the substrate, the substrate's actually in here. Um, the wood fibers are sterilized and then taken out in front of a HEPA, um, inoculated and then sealed. And then over there will be the incubation space. So they'll be incubating for six to eight weeks. And that's hopefully gonna be another product that they'll just be uh, 12 months a year, possibly allow us to keep someone else on. Yeah. Um, for the winter, if we, have a, if we have a good season outside, then Tommy and I can take much needed vacation. Yeah, that's what but, I was gonna say. But yeah, if that, we have yeah. a bad season, then we have income for ourselves all winter. Yeah, crucial. So. I mean, did you, I don't know if you talked at all about um, kind of just why we expanded mushrooms. I, I touched on yeah. it. Just, we had such a bad September from the rains around this area. And it was kind of like a do or die, we need something. And um, we've always, we found here at the farm in general that Anytime a mistake happens is when we've had our greatest leaps at the farm. And that was, it wasn't necessarily a mistake, but having something go that wrong in our fields when is normally our highest production months led to something that now is becoming kind of our staple, one of our staple products. And yeah, we grew from it. That's yeah. what you gotta do, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? 